So today I want to talk about the Cold Steel Con. This knife uh, appeared back in 2017 at Blade Show. A lot of people are excited about it. Um, in my opinion, it's kind of under the radar. Not a whole lot of people carry these or talk about them often. Uh, I think I kind of know why. It's a little bit plain. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, there are definitely pros and cons, which of course I'll talk about throughout the video. But uh, I got this, I want to say early 2018, maybe February-ish, somewhere around there. So I've had this knife for almost a year. This is among probably a handful of knives that I've had for about a year that I kind of used on and off, forgot about it for a couple months, revisited it, forgot about it for a couple months, and so forth. Um, but I'm going to be catching up on some knife reviews, and this was the first one on my list that I want to talk about. So first, let's get some specs out of the way for the people who are interested. Um, blade on here is three inches, and this is an AUS 8A. All right, the handle is almost dead on at four inches, making it, of course, seven inches overall. We have a G10 handle on here. Obviously, you can see it's blue. There are no liners or anything, okay, which contributes to its lightweight, which is very nice. Uh, only 2.4 ounces, all right? It's noticeably lightweight for a three inch blade, which I really like a lot. Uh, of course, this one has the triad lock, which is incredibly strong. Of course, that is a lockback type design. I think that's one of the reasons why some people just have no interest in this. Uh, I talk to a lot of people about knives all the time. Lockbacks seem to be kind of on the back burner for a lot of people. There's so many cool, you know, different locking mechanisms that are popular. Obviously, the Axis Lock from Benchmade. Uh, Spider Coast Compression Lock is another one that just people gravitate towards because you can kind of flick them open, flick them shut. They're fun to play with. You know, lockbacks are, they're definitely alive and kicking. There's plenty of people who like their lockbacks. But like I said, it just kind of makes it a little bit plain for some people. Um, more specifically, what makes this one kind of interesting is this ramp design for the thumb stud. All right, so if we get a top of view of that, you could see that it angles out for both left or right hand use. The clip is swappable, which we'll talk about in a moment too, because it's kind of interesting how they did that. But yeah, this is uh, kind of the main feature here on this particular knife. I believe this is the Andrew Demko uh, design, which he does a lot of stuff for Cold Steel. Um, but yeah, you can see it's a ramped thumb stud insert, which is super unique. It is removable, okay? And I have heard people taking these out to have somewhat of a, you know, spider hole type opening. However, it is super sharp. If you do remove this because you don't like it and you want to use an opening hole instead, I do recommend knocking off the edges with some sandpaper or something just so it's not so aggressive. Uh, but I happen to like this. I think there's nothing wrong with it at all. It does function perfectly, all right? It's very easy to open, just as it should be. Now, here's the thing. You can't really flick this open easily without any wrist action. Of course, most knives, you can you know use a little wrist action to get that open. Uh, but I'm among many, many people out there that love to be able to flick their knives open without any movement. And although I can, it takes a lot of practice, not nearly as comfortable, and also it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, even though I've literally flicked thousands and thousands of knives, even practicing with this one sometimes might come up a little bit short, all right, which is, you know, a little bit annoying, I guess. Um, you know, but of course, you know, slow manual opening, it's totally fine. You get a great aggressive grip on that. So it's a completely functional, but it's kind of like reinventing the wheel. Some people see it as, you know, almost annoying. I, you know, I don't care one way or the other, but like I said, if I had to critique it, I'd prefer something that's easy to flick open, which this one is not. So the blade design on this knife is an American Tanto. All right, I know some people out there that don't like Tanto knives uh, for EDC use just because it's a little bit harder for them to sharpen. Um, I always usually give this advice to people is don't look at this as one, you know, difficult edge to sharpen, just look at it as two different knives. Okay, you have one edge right here. So just sharpen this portion here. Okay, there is actually a little sharpening twirl on the bottom as well. Make it a little bit easier for sharpening. And then treat that secondary uh, angle change as a whole different knife, okay? Because if you treat this as just one long edge, what ends up happening is you round this secondary point off. It's not the end of the world. In fact, I know someone who does that on purpose. Um, but, you know, just a little tip for sharpening. Just treat as two separate blades and you should maintain that secondary point just fine. Um, did come super sharp. The AUS 8A is a little bit different than AUS 8 or AUS 8. A lot of people say AUS 8, something I never did. Uh, but uh, the A in the 8A, um, I believe, represents the annealing process, which is like a slow cooling process, which is supposed to make it harder. You know, uh, I don't really see a huge difference. I've used multiple blades with AUS 8 as well as multiple blades with AUS 8A. 
there's not a noticeable difference. I've never done like a, you know, literally side by side test as far as, you know, cutting manila rope or anything like that. Um, the 8A technically should be a little bit better, but like I said, it's not, it's not blowing my socks off or anything. It's totally adequate though for the price range on this knife, which is about 40 bucks. As low as I think 36 ish, uh, only up to like 42, 43. All right, so that's the, the ballpark, about $40 knife. I think you're getting a lot of knife for $40. I actually really like this a lot. Like I said, it's kind of a sleeper. Not a whole lot of people out there talking about this one all the time. I know there's plenty of people who own them, got them when they were released. Um, like I said, I mean, definite pros. It is super lightweight. It is affordable, has good uh, edge retention for you know the price point. Um, something different than the you know Chinese D2 that we're seeing just swarms of <laughs> and pretty much every new knife that's good is in you know D2 made overseas. So they're all it, it's fine. It's just something different here. Uh, but like I said, I think a lot of people stay away from it just because either maybe the Tanto thing, it's not everyone's uh, you know bag, not everyone likes the Tanto blade. Um, they seem to be a little bit less popular overall. And the fact that it's a lockback. You know, some people don't like the triad locks because they're hard to use. Uh, in this particular design, uh, you can close it with one hand. I don't know if I closed it earlier in the video, but if you depress that lock, the blade is not going to touch your finger here, okay? As the blade comes it rests on the ricasso, which is underneath your edge, okay? So for one hand closing, just depress the lock and flick forward. The blade drops, then you can change your position and bring it in. All right, some people say they have a very hard time closing this in one hand. At least I've heard that from two different people who have owned these and talked to me about them. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not it's not super easy. Obviously, if I had a, an axis lock or, like I said, something like the compression lock, it'd be open and closed in blink of an eye. And also other, other designs, frame locks, even liner locks. I mean, they're a lot faster. So it's a little bit of a slower deploying, slower closing. Not everyone's into this, you know, kind of different... Um, thumb stud insert i guess you can call it it's kind of a unique thing but uh yeah i guess these are some of the things that turn people off to this knife but i like it because it's different you guys know me i like things that are unique speaking of unique uh cold steel pocket clip on here i like the design it's it's actually totally fine as far as tension obviously cold steel has a history of having super super snug or, or very tight pocket clips a lot of times their handles are very curved so it's quite you know common to see one of the cold steel knives come with two different clips because if it's reversible, it'll be facing the wrong way, right? But this one is totally ambidextrous, all right, straight clip. And what's interesting, if you notice on the back, they did a brass insert, okay? Of course, has uh, threads in there, so you can uh, swap the clip to the other side. Now, if you look inside the knife, inside the frame, there's actually a brass insert on the other side as well, which the pot clip is already through right here. So you might be able to catch that right there. All right, because obviously there's no steel liners. It's just the G10. So they had to put that insert in so you're able to you know, utilize that clip. So right now on this side, this is a body screw holding the back spacer, which is from the bottom of the lock to the bottom of the knife. And obviously if you take that out to swap the clip, that will go on the back side right here to replace it. So pretty interesting. It's nice to know that it is ambidextrous. Of course, with a lock back, or in this case, a triad lock, it is truly uh, ambidextrous. So righty or lefty friendly, but super lightweight, neat little kind of affordable Tanto. And like I said, something different, but for the reasons mentioned, not everyone talks about it. It's kind of a, a passing thing, but I like it. I think it's cool. So that's pretty much it. That's my opinion on the Cold Steel Con. I don't absolutely love it. It's not the best thing ever. Um, it's not the worst thing ever either. I think in the $40 price range, it should definitely be looked at. Um, in 2018, and now it's 2019, can't wait to see what they're going to come out this year. But Cold Steel has put out a ton of affordable, I mean, super affordable, really good folders, EDC options. Uh, the Prolite, I don't have one, but everything I've seen looks awesome. They're like, you know, $21, $22, something like that. Um, again, just getting a, a ton of knife for your money. Plenty of other options out there as well, which is really cool because I've always been a huge Cold Steel fan. Of course, I love all knife companies, but Cold Steel has put out some pretty interesting things over the years, but they're usually uh, pretty pricey. So it's nice to see that they're focusing on just regular, you know, sub $100 EDC knives. And in this case, sub $50 and, you know, as mentioned, you know, $20 EDC knife options. That's really cool. I like that. I like to see a lot more affordable stuff as much as I love really high-end cutlery. Most of you guys out there are buying and using, you know, $50 to $100 knives. 
All right, or maybe maybe if you're really into the knife scene, let's say 100 to 200 dollar knives. Not everyone's gonna go out and spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a, on a pocket knife, you know. So there you go, guys. There's the Cold Steel Con. Let me know down in the comments if you have one, and if so, what do you think of it? But like I said, middle of the road. I like it. Don't love it. Don't hate it. It's just kind of there. <laughs> I will keep this in my unique knife collection just because of this opening thumb stud dealio there. I think that's pretty fascinating. So this one will stick with me for many years to come. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow with another video. Take care guys.